Okay, so before y'all say anything, this one quite literally came out of nowhere. So if you've seen any of my stuff on social media, you know that I used to be a cook. I've gone to culinary school. I used to work at several popular hotels in my hometown. I've worked the gamut from short order to black tablecloth restaurants, including Waffle House. And this movie came out of nowhere for me. And suddenly I got kind of an influx of videos regarding it. And I thought that it would be kind of cool to, to react to it because I have received a couple of requests to do The Bear, and I watched a little bit of like one episode and started getting like flashbacks, so I figured this would be the next best thing. Now, for those of you who know, and for those of you who don't, my name is TK, and while I am no longer a pastry chef, I am your resident lunatic, and today we are watching The Menu, starring Ralph Fiennes. Now, I am not one for horror movies, but this seems to be more thriller than horror. I was kind of under the impression when I first saw the trailers that this is sort of going to be like a Hannibal Lecter sort of thing. And to be super honest with you, I did not like Hannibal. Like Silence of the Lambs I liked all right, but the show Hannibal was just not for me. So I was really only a cook for about five, six years, if that, honestly, for many reasons, specifically mental and physical health. But how I became a pastry chef was actually kind of an accident. I used to work at this hotel that had a pastry chef and one day he just just vanished. He didn't call. He didn't show up. I went to his apartment thinking he might need a ride, but all of his stuff was gone and his apartment door was open. We never heard from him again. We don't know where he went. However, we were left without a pastry chef and our head chef, bless his heart, tried to like do both at the same time and it just was not working for him. So I just kind of took the responsibility from him and I stayed in that position for a good year, year and a half. And it was an experience. I probably would never be specifically a pastry chef again. And if I had the stamina, I probably could go back to a professional kitchen, but I don't think my physical health will hold up that well. <laughs> now, I'll be blunt with y'all. I am not much for horror movies, and I don't think I ever will be. If I look away during something particularly gory, I apologize in advance. I'm not trying to miss anything. If it's gross, or if we start eating people, I'm gonna have some issues. I'm just gonna be be honest with you. I don't like zombies for that very reason. I did this much the same for Vox Machina. Hopefully get over it if it gets too bad, but from what I've heard, it doesn't. Even though I don't talk a lot about it on YouTube, I actually have a deep and abiding love for food in general, or honestly, anything that sustains us, which is why I say happy eating at the end of every video, because in a way, the things we enjoy sustain us, and if I enjoy enjoy what I'm doing, then I would like to share it with you like I like to share my food through my love of cooking. Some people have asked me why I say happy eating at the end of every video. That's why. Now, with that being said, let us put on our headphones and do some unhappy eating. Once again, this is not necessarily my kind of movie, so we'll see. I normally like loud, dumb action films. You guys know this already. Uh, so something like this is a bit out of my wheelhouse. How many production companies worked on this? Okay, only two. <laughs> Invites you to experience the menu. This is already too loud. Please don't smoke, it'll kill your palate. Oh God. Yet 50% of chefs smoke. Anya Taylor-Joy's eyes are very intense. What are they trying to profit? 1250 a head, that's how. 1250? That's not ruining this by talking crazy, I just go with the phone. I mean, you're already ruining it by nitpicking everything she's doing. All she did was light a cigarette. Great power tasting. No one calls it that. <laughs> no one calls it that. Oh, she knows her. This music is beautiful. Who's Lillian Bush? Just good credit for Civil War. Oh dear. Okay, well, it's official. Tonight will be madness. <laughs> it's a nice ass boat. Not even El Bali had this kind of pageantry. Boat. Boat. They don't know who he is. Yeah, we're on a boat. Eh? We're on a boat. <laughs> we're on a boat, motherfucker. Hey, are you supposed to be running interference for me? Make sure people don't bother me. That's bad. We both know you were not bothering. They were not bothering you. They were not feeling it. <laughs>
emulsion. In other words, a foam. Foam. Foams are fucking useless. Did he just slap her hand? Algae. Yes. I think I prefer just the oyster, though. Same. The balance of the products you need the mouse feel with the minion. No, 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 because I fucking hate molecular gastronomists. No, you don't need to deconstruct everything. Sometimes just the food is fine. It's fine. I don't understand why you have to deconstruct every goddamn thing when the food is right in front of you. Sorry. <laughs> Heston Blumenthal is a fucking menace. Yeah, that's not, that's not surprising. Y'all a little too old to be talking about high school like that. You ain't getting no paparazzi. Everybody knows that. This is I'm Marga. He was supposed to bring someone else. Mr. Lee Brand, Mr. <gasps> this was filmed in Savannah. I can tell. No, now I need to look it up. Was this filmed in Savannah? Hang on. Now I need to check. Yeah, it was filmed on Tybee Beach. So this film about my former career is <laughs> filmed where I used to work. Girl, this is Jekyll Island. <laughs> It's not. It's not what biome means. Yeah, that's not bullshit. Definitely mount bullshit. Booty. I love this stuff. And I'm close personal friends with the chef. Mmm. I've seen the trailers. I don't think that's a good thing. So what happens if you serve it on the 153rd day? Does all hell break loose? Oh, I'm sure she's never heard that joke. Bacteria would introduce itself to the consumer's bloodstream and spread into their spinal membranes, after which point he or she would become incapacitated and shortly thereafter expire. I am not in the mood to entertain any of your stupid ass questions. Thank you. That is similar to elderly. Like a big, dysfunctional, regimented family. We gel. Mm -hmm. We use egg or sugar. Thank you very much. That's that we all live here. You guys ever get burned out or? Burned out? If you notice that some of the people who are just sitting on other people's beds feel entitled to the space. Who's hungry? Even we are not allowed no, that's where we burn people in bear suits. I mean, this 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 movie reminds me of Midsommar. Wow, he and Felicity have just been arguing this whole time, haven't they? Okay, so some people are already here. And before y'all talk about, oh, they're not wearing gloves, there are a lot of restaurants that do not wear gloves even for ready-made food. Some customers are allergic to latex and certain kinds of plastics. It would just be better to use tongs or very, very, very clean hands. I'm guessing that's his ex-girlfriend. Put your that phone back. Her wearing a leather jacket. You really know your stuff, Mr. Ledford. <laughs> and Chef, is he around here somewhere? I'd love Why to talk with Why don't you take him. your seat? This is, this is our domain now. Sit your ass down. He doesn't think much of the people that work for him or that are serving him. Of me. Is he looking at me? Nope. He's looking at Princess Peach. There's someone here that's not supposed to be here. A moose boosh. So the appetizer before the appetizer. Why is she here? She got here before everyone else. Press and pickled cucumber melon, milk snow, and charred lace. Enjoy. Ongoing obsession with snow. I mean, they ain't seeing any with this film in a Tybee Island. Sorry, I'm probably gonna keep bringing that up. She did not say of what species, but she did say they slaughter the dairy cows. Seems counterproductive. If you don't put your goddamn phone away. Oh, she, is she quitting? So yeah, she is. She she's quitting. Yeah, baby, we're pathetic, aren't we? Oh my god, dude, somebody shoot us! I have a feeling that y'all are gonna get worse than shot. No, no, it's good. I'm sitting with the coolest girl here. Obsessed with being with the cool girl, apparently. Those people are idiots. What they do, it doesn't matter. They play with inflatable balls and ukuleles and shit. Fuck you! Materials of life itself. And death itself. It's Fuck you! Every artist thinks that they're on the cutting edge of everything. First course. Appetizer. It's a salad. My God, he is menacing. Jesus Christ. I'm Julian Slowick, and tonight it'll be our pleasure to feed you. Feed you to what? The other guests? And he's like, yes, yes, yes. Slowick is absolutely putting on airs at this point. Because we already know he's the antagonist here, especially because the previews, what he's doing here is putting everyone at ease by putting himself in a vulnerable position. Placed on rocks from the shore. Let him explain. Right. Keep your mouth shut. Meaningless compared to what happens outside, in nature. Where people like this would not be able to survive. <laughs> she asked you to not. I'm pretty sure he doesn't even know about your existence. 
I kind of want him to- What? I feel like you want everyone to like you, Tyler. I feel like maybe that's a bit of an obsession of yours since you're still so fixated on high school. It's magical. Who is that? A uh, sycophant. Okay, so he's a sycophant. Got it. But like I was saying before, Sloic is sort of putting himself in a vulnerable position. He puts himself in the middle of them and has a very open posture and none of them feel threatened. But the way he's speaking to them still lets him know that he's in charge because of the way the people who work for him act. Okay, so we go to Italy, right? Mm -hmm. They shoot me in capri pants on a pastel green Vespa driving around and get to some Giuseppe's farm with cheese. I eat the cheese, and then I, there's a close-up of me, and I close my eyes, and I fake an orgasm, and then off to South Africa, and then I maybe I talk about how racism is not so cool, and bingo bongo, Emmy time. It's fucking Christ. That's a disaster. Is that, it is a disaster. Uh, okay, so they're, 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 they're dick measuring a little bit. I have a feeling that they all, all three of those dudes have a uh, love-hate relationship with each other. A mostly hate, but love to talk. I saw Harry at De Laurentiis the other day. No, how is he? You know. Harry. Wow. Riveting. And don't think I didn't miss that shot of those two in the background. I want painting in five! Yes! Like I said, he puts himself in a vulnerable position, but you know how to act because of the way the people work for him act. It kind of reminds me of Makima from Chainsaw Man, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Even today, grain represents 65% of all agriculture. That's not super true, but I'll let it slide. Bed for our daily bread. Shut up, Tyler! God! You get no bread. That's pretty clever, actually. I'm not gonna lie, that's... I like that. And they think it's a bit, but it's not. I mean, it's a little outrageous, isn't it? Yes, they're the rich people. They don't need to eat the com- They're not here to eat the common man's food, regardless of how refined it is. I mean, I wasn't gonna say anything. I noticed as soon as it came out. Did you? You really shouldn't see that in a restaurant of this quality. There it is. Well, there it is. Broken sauces happen, but broken sauces are pretty useless. Like critics. Critics are pretty damn useless. Basically insulting you. Yes. Trust me, he's telling the story. He's telling the story of all of you suck. You're gonna die tonight. Only the girl next door, but maybe there are some rules that you should give a fuck about. Like, I don't know, giving food to people at a restaurant. <laughs> yes. And he, she's like, well, I'm pretty ordinary. Oh, you're not ordinary, I swear. I'm used to using Oh, I make my own from apple. What? Miss Bloom. Okay. Could we please get a little bread, you know, and some gluten-free for my friend as well? No. You'll get what we give you. You know who we are, right? Yeah, she doesn't care. You're not in charge here. You know, we work with Doug Varick, right? No, you work for Mr. Varick. What? <laughs> we won't tell a soul, lady. Yeah, I promise, okay? No. You can't even call me by my name. You'll eat less than you desire and more than you deserve. <laughs> Death omen number one. Menu only makes sense if you eat. But you told us not. Tyler's gonna start turning on her. You're concerned, but I am perfectly capable of deciding when I eat. She's a she's a worthy adversary, it seems. Did not even acknowledge Tyler. Humiliating. Humiliating. Yeah. Tyler, the guy's a prick. Yep. See, I told you he was gonna start turning on her. I'm sufficiently unnerved. There's a two thousand. Cobb. That's so much wine. I'm sorry. I don't like red wine. I don't care how advanced your palate is. If you don't like something, growing to like it is not advancing your palate. It's an acquired taste. You acquire it. She does look like Claire. Why do you keep saying that? She doesn't. You don't think so? She is nothing like her, Claire. Our? Can we not There's obsess, it. please? Mmm. See it, development co -exec. What the hell is that? It's in development, so I'd be developing or, or helping to develop. I'd be in R and D, and I'd be making more money than I do babysitting your tawdry ass. It's hypothetical. Anyway. What? There he goes. Cool. This lady here. This is my mother. Ah. Screamed and begged him to stop. To make him stop, well, I finally had to stab him in the thigh with kitchen scissors. Oh. Backstory to what makes him a, a chef artist. No, no, that's horrifying. Imagine being so rich and that stupid. Power makes you stupid. It's uh, 
what you once said. Put you on the map. Put me on the map. Precisely what map would that be? I wonder. That was a very subtle insult. We hope this taco night evokes strong memories for us all. For some of y'all, it's going to be your last memories. What are they, Well, They're restaurants. Restaurants that she that tanked. That all closed. Jesus Christ, what's with this guy? He hates me. No! Should I apologize? Apologize for... Apologize oh, for oh, what? Right. I mean, breaking the rules, maybe, but that's not going to change anything. Wait, um... Guys, what the fuck? There's a lot of zeros. Are y'all embezzling? Are y'all embezzling? Cause wire transfers. These are tortillas. Tortillas? I have this place close by the morning, you guys saying? No, that, that won't be necessary. necessary. This is so extra. They could have just put some photos in between the tortillas. They try to turn us in. Right. They just if they turn us in, they'd be turning back in. Yeah. And then they'd be just as fucked as we are. Right? So we're fine. Now you're trying to rationalize it. Excuse me, sir. Hey, Hi. Hi. Don't snap at me! S like, did you just snap it? Excuse me? What did you just call me? I called you a child. Fucking acting like No, at that point, I'm leaving. I'm out. to me right now. You cannot speak to me that way. Actually, I can because Ding Dong, I'm the one who's paying, so maybe shut up and eat. I'm out. Mm -mm. I don't care. I'm calling a boat. Okay, she's gonna say, Ma'am, you can't leave. Nothing. I'm fighting with my boyfriend. Leave me alone. What's behind that silver door? The outside that you're not allowed to see yet because it's gonna be a horrifying reveal later. Excuse me, sir? Boundaries! Oh my god! I'd like to know specifically what it was about the last course that you did not enjoy. My company! It has nothing to do with you! <laughs> this is a COVID production, I can tell. That's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing at all. This this movie is very anti-Gone Girl, I've noticed. Fourth course. Still very theatrical, but minimalist. The Japanese and the nurse don't stop. That's not minimalist at all. They're really rationalizing it as hard as possible. Unless that garnish is edible, it's not minimalist. He thinks she's special now. Excuse me. Well, what the hell is going on? Yeah. Uh, would you just let me finish, please? Is that okay? <laughs> that was so condescending. It was hilarious. They keep talking about Varric. I'm guessing that's what the... Uh... Originally from Sparks, Nevada, Jeremy studied at the Culinary Institute in Hyde Park. He's very good, but he's not great. He'll never be great. I'm sure that's what he tells all his cooks. There are a lot of chefs who think this way. Chefs like talk to this like their shoes, like to their shoe chefs, all the fucking time. The mess you make of your life, of your body, of your sanity, by giving everything you have to pleasing people, you will never know. Jesus. Wow. And do you want my life? No, chef. Is Je Jeremy is about to be freed. Judas kiss. I'm looking down because I'm expecting this man to explode. And they just go back and they're just gonna cart him out the way i would not have eaten any meat <laughs> oh god and they're and they're carrying him through the kitchen chef you know they shouldn't be carrying that man through the kitchen they are so desperate to rationalize this i ain't eating that meat i ain't eating it the mess all right be jeremy loudon <laughs> Enjoy, everyone. Oh, this movie is a bit more cathartic than I thought it was going to be. Because holy shit. Tyler knew this was going to happen all along, wasn't it? didn't he? He probably knows the entire itinerary. That's why he's so involved in the chef liking him. One, because it guarantees his life being spared. And two, he probably enjoys all of these rich, popular people that he sort of envies. Like, you hear him talking about high school all the time. He probably delights in seeing them die. That would be very difficult without phone service. It's Tabby Island. There's phone service everywhere. I'm <laughs> sorry. I don't mean to keep bringing that up. No. Oh. Ah! And he's gonna cut off his wedding ring finger. Oh no! Oh! And Tyler is just chowing down. Hmm? We have all five stages of grief happening on screen, and that's pretty big. Go talk to him because you know him, right? I made that up. Like I'm a fraud, girl. I don't know if you know this. Can we like staunch him or something? Man, this new trend of horror in broad daylight's fucking with me, dude. She is so desperate to rationalize what's happening. Jackie, Jackie, we need to leave. Can I come too? God. And he's gonna start, to, once again, he's gonna start turning on her. Who are you? You're not supposed to be here. This entire evening has been painstakingly planned, and you are not a part of that plan. Did Tyler kill this Miss Westervelt? If you live, no. <laughs> no, what? Yes, Chef! Yes, Chef. How long you have to 
decide. The fact that there's a blodget of it in the background is fucking with me. Did he offer you a kitchen fork? Uh, what was it? Protein or veg? You bitch! You invited me here to be served on a silver platter. He knew. Tyler knew. And now they're all desperate to get out. Go down fighting. You ain't gonna break that window. One, it's made of plastic. <laughs> Cause double paned windows don't shake like that. I'm sorry, Margo is the mo not Margo, um, oh, I forgot her name, I feel so bad. I- she's the most menacing part. Is this bergamot I'm getting, Chef? Yes, it is. Yes, it was on the menu. Uh, I, I think I speak for everybody here when I say that, uh, What the fuck is going on?! Think of yourselves as ingredients in a degustation concept. Oh. In concept, uh, figuratively speaking. You are being broken down. You're being deconstructed just like all the food I make here. Hang on, chef. No, 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 you don't talk. Sorry, <laughs> no, chef. shut up. To you buttress. You Whoop! More broken emotion, madam. It keeps getting bigger. Are they gonna drown her in it? Mr. Liebrand, kindly name one dish you ate the last time you were here. He doesn't remember. Most diners don't. Eleven. He doesn't remember. What does it matter? Oh, it matters. <laughs> And I've been fooled in trying to satisfy people who can never be satisfied. Never be satisfied. Ah! You're right. Doug Verrick is my angel investor. Uh, they kept mentioning him. This dude's about to fucking die. Is that who the angel wings are from? Or are they gonna? Be, are they about to, like, hang him from the eaves? Doug Verrick owns me, except now things are a little more complicated, and I own Doug Verrick. Quite literally. Please just make it stop. Just, just fucking tell us how to stop this. We'll stop it, okay? You can't stop Obviously, it. Obviously, we have money. Just say how much. Money ain't gonna save you, bro. Money's the reason you're here. When he questioned my menu, he would even request substitutions, despite the fact that there are no substitutions at all. Done. All work and no play makes Jack a very dull boy. Who's he? But what's he about to get eaten by? It's Tabby Island, it might be gators. Oh, that's so horrifying. Oh my god! I couldn't look. I can barely look now. Do you hear it? Do you hear that silence? Listen, can you hear it? Tyler is a little serial killer of his own. So I can do what I want now. All gloves are off, and you're all going to die. So did Tyler already kill Westervelt? Now, you have this rich-ass restaurant. You are a serial killer of epic proportions here, and you still have a dot matrix printer. How dare you? You don't belong with those rich people. You belong with us. Fellow service industry worker, when I see one. Mr. Liebrand, how do you know him? She's a sex worker, isn't she? From all evening. Oh, I think you know. No, I don't. And now they're on a level playing field, folks. Is that he told me to tell him that he was a good man and that I was his daughter and that he loved me and I loved him. I'm sorry, he's a romantic. What the fuck? Do you enjoy providing your services? Yes. Solid. Do you enjoy providing yours? Mm, clearly not. I haven't desired to cook for someone in ages, and one does miss that feeling. Sometimes that's what happens when something you love becomes a job rather than a hobby. The fact that she's wearing combat boots while everyone else is wearing impractical shoes. She's just gonna take more wine. We're about to watch another kill. They're still trying to get out. Get out of here. It's okay. No, we're gonna die today. Yeah. Yeah. That shouldn't have been funny. <laughs> How is she going to die? But he didn't fire me. No. He kept me in his kitchen and refused to look me in the eye or speak directly to me for eight months. Which is incredibly dehumanizing and demeaning. Our next course is called Man's Folly. You get a 30 second head start. That's the first time we've seen her break all day. Mm. Oh, and it's the thigh, too. You'll be given a 45 second head start, at which point members of my staff will try and catch you. If they do catch... Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, the... All right. Hold it. What? Sorry. Come on, 
you know I'm awful wonderful critic. I'll, I'll send for help first thing. And at first chance, they abandon their female counterparts. The men get to escape, the women don't. Y'all better fend her off! Oh, okay. I thought she was gonna hand them all weapons! I deadass thought she was about to hand all of them weapons. Six course. Run, bitch, run. Let's talk a bit about the man's folly dish of the menu. This dish is called man's folly because the men are literally leaving behind everything that's vital for their survival. Because at this point, the women in the movie have been literally left behind. Like, umeboshi is the reason plum vinegar exists. Whey is vital in yogurt production, and sea kelp and lettuce maintain the biome of the ocean. Yet, despite their incredible importance, these things are often left behind because they're regarded as too sour, unattractive, or difficult to work with. And when these women often speak out against these labels and accusations, they're often called gold diggers or bottom feeders, like the Dungeness crab. I have been ignored by my chef before, and it has you feeling like the scum of the earth. And that is essentially what the sous chef used to make a dish equal to Slowix. Man's folly, like a broken egg. This is fantastic. Of the moboshi and the, the waves of ferment. That sounds really acidic. Pickled onion with fur- Pickled plum with er ferment? There was a time that would have meant a lot to me, Miss Thorne. But now nothing means anything to me because I have been beaten and dehumanized and destroyed and they can't empathize with her at all as she breaks down. This is so good. You're very talented. Thank you. Usually don't like foam, but all they can do is offer platitudes to someone who's breaking down in front of them. And see, now the finance bros are falling apart. So, you know my husband. I know that bridge. Yeah. Right. Oh, but yeah. Roll credits. The only funny joke CinemaSins ever made. Otherwise, it just tastes good, and who cares? I mean, really, you should have your own place, right? Mm -hmm. and I could help you with that. Help us, and I can help you. Oh, everyone dying was my pitch, actually. Super proud of it. <laughs> oh no! Am I empathizing with the murderer? Thank you. Okay, are all the men about to die here? Chicken. A special bite for the last guest to be caught. A little play on the tassard egg with creme fraiche and maple. <laughs> That's not funny. <laughs> not that you guys give a single flying fuck, but my name is not Margo. It's Aaron. I thought it was going to be Erica. You want to talk about our daughter now, you fuck? They could have killed me, you bitch. I'm sorry, I'm a fucking failure. Yeah, feeling bad about yourself isn't gonna fix this. I wrote a negative recommendation to someone. I know you see see me. Ah! No, because I wanted to swallow first. Oh. Don't speak with your mouth full. What were you told ahead of time? You told me it to be the greatest men you ever created. Right, and? 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 That everyone... Die. Yeah, I knew he knew. Not the young woman here tonight. Oh, what happened to her? Your date. He killed her, didn't he? She broke up to me, Chef. So you brought Margo. So he brought. Ooh, that is incredibly dehumanizing. And yep, there you go. Beat his ass. Beat his ass, girl. So you brought the escort the to die. Do you know what a Paco jet is? Yeah. And the, you you knew what the yeah. bergamot was. <laughs> <I taste it. laughs> Ber bergamot's. Pretty pungent. Cook. Oh god. This man has been dying for validation his right? entire life. I honestly thought he killed his his previous girlfriend. So he's just like everyone else. He doesn't like he doesn't treat women with respect, clearly. He's mm -hmm. desperate for validation. He only wants the status, but he doesn't have any practical knowledge. He look wonderful. Doesn't he look wonderful, Margot? He looks wonderful enough for me to beat his ass. 
I have a feeling that the next sort c- course is going to be Tyler's head. Now, cook. I don't cook. You don't have a name. Cook. Okay. None of them have name tags. You think you know so much? Now. Didn't wash <laughs> leaks. You think you know so much? He's not even using the right knife. He's not peeling the shallots. <laughs> Kindergartner could do that. Yeah, suddenly you don't know so much. Oh, that's too hot. That's... Mm. This man's humiliation is being served. No seasoning, no nothing. Maybe you want to flip it. And some raw vegetables and raw lamb. That tastes like well, bullshit. It's actually quite Horrible. <laughs> it's literally called Tyler's bullshit. Undercooked lamb and edible sheep. <laughs> Lack of cohesion. And he's willing to do anything the chef asks him to do. He's about to walk into the oven, isn't he? I'm expecting a grisly reveal of his body later. Me? Yes, you remember the smoke. Uh, maybe they, I don't, chef, perhaps one of us. Chef. Margot is now one of us, Elsa. Let it go, Elsa. Sorry. This is, is this a reveal of oh. Tyler's body? Oh, he hung himself. He is willing to do whatever the chef asks him. And I'm assuming that's what the chef told him to do. Like he basically said, <laughs> get good or KYS. Chef plays Overwatch. <laughs> unbothered King. Not so unbothered King. He's still bleeding. I'm not trying to sound like all whatever here or anything, but uh, I just think, I just don't think it's really fair. Ah, don't talk to him about fairness. What about her? Yeah, what about her? Student loans? I'm sorry, you're dying. <laughs> That's not funny. <laughs> it's a little bit funny. What's in that barrel? It's kerosene, isn't it? He's gonna burn the whole place down. That's what they mean by they're all dying. He's gonna blow the place up. Which does kind of make me wonder what the point of all the dramatics with the singular killings is, but I guess that's to put the fear of God in them. Their last memory is how much he hates them. Woof. Behind the silver door? One is allowed inside Chef's house. Do you think we're stuck? My bolo tie says you're a bitch. Why would you die for him? Not a pretty place. She was just like her. She's so menacing. I need to see her in more things. I need to see Elsa in more things. She's so menacing. She's almost more menacing than Ralph Fiennes. Oh, <laughs> back up, Chef. I didn't forget. Why do the coolest characters always have to die with a knife in their throat? This is just like Tangerine from Bullet Train all over again. Coolest character in the movie dies with a knife to the neck, just splurting blood and gagging. And it's just, it hurts me specifically. It is an insult to me specifically. At one point that wasn't self-defense. I did catch that. It's giving unsub. It's giving paging Dr. Reed. Tantalus a sh- Really? It's a little heavy-handed, don't you think? So he gave up a lot for this restaurant that doesn't satisfy him. Hamburger Howie's. So that's how he started. That might be a picture of his son, which would be cute. Ralph Fine's son, not Sloic's son. Oh, that's why they were here? He gave her a chance to escape, I bet. She's not wearing her armor anymore. I don't think she's wearing her boots. Tonight, everything I'm doing is pure ego. It is not egoless. <laughs> this is the last celebration of your ego, buddy. I can carry a cast iron from a hot oven to your table with no protection. That is true. My right hand specifically has diminished feeling in its finger, in my fingers, and I was only a chef for five years. Voluntarily given by the oppressor. It must be demanded by the oppressed. <laughs> Why didn't you all try harder to fight back? To get out of here? Honestly, you probably could have. You probably could have, yeah. Are you the owner? I'm the executive chef. Did someone to close the Tyler door? Someone sort of closed Tyler storage. Maybe you should check the place where the call came from. I'm pretty sure her body is still there. Oh, wow. I I'm a big fan. Thank you. Would you like this autograph? Removing the agency from him. He could easily go, help, but... 
one where uh, you play the surgeon. Uh oh. Usually you would check where the radio signal came from, like the exact place on the island. Oh, he is gonna get him killed. Oh, no, 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 bro! Call for assistance first! What are you doing, my guy? Why are you all crying? He has a literal army behind him and there is only one dude! No. Oh, okay. So this is all part of the act. Okay, good. I was like, oh my god, this fucking idiot. Oh, and we saw him earlier, didn't we? I think he was in the kitchen earlier. Unless I'm just getting someone, another guy with a beard confused. I was wrong. You're, you're an eater. You're a taker. I'm someone with self-preservation, you fucking prick. And they're going to enjoy their last meal. Mama hasn't said a word. And she's been ready to die. I wonder what that chocolate is made out of. Probably Tyler blood. I gotta say, this movie is really sucking me in because I absolutely fell for the Coast Guard bit. That's right, sweetie, take your power back. And he's wearing the apron. Like all the other cooks. Oh no, she is still wearing her boots. My food is not to your liking. For starters, you take There's no fucking food. food. When I eat your food, it tastes like it was made with no love. Oh, this is ridiculous. We always cook with love. Love, love is the first ingredient. Fuck you. <laughs> Come on, chef. I thought tonight was a night of hard home truths. This is one of them. You cook with obsession, not love. Ding ding. That's right, girl. Take it back. How hungry? Starved. Everything. You know what I'd really like? A burger. A cheeseburger. Oh, a cheeseburger. Whatever. That's right, bitch! I know about your past at Cheeseburger Bobby's! I'll make you a very good, very traditional cheeseburger. With American cheese, bitch! As if you're eating the first cheeseburger you ever ate. The cheap one your parents could barely afford. Show me. How do you like it? Medium. American cheese. If you can choose the doneness of your burger, it's not that cheap. <laughs> Honey, I don't think healing the monster's gonna work in this instance. Two slices of cheese for each burger? Jesus Christ, man. I'm just kidding. It's a it's a it's a cheeseburger. Come on. The ghost in the room is gone. Mom's out cold, which is where this all started in the first place. Make sure that doesn't come with a side of cyanide. That ass that looks so good right now. God, I don't think I've ever wanted a burger so bad in my life. God, the music in this movie is beautiful. And she eats it with the blood on her hands. Okay, I'm going to blow up the building now. Now that is a cheeseburger. Unfortunately, I think my eyes are a little bigger than my stomach. Can I get this to go? Can I get the rest to go? Please let me go. I haven't done anything to you. Please let me go. Just a well-made cheeseburger. Oh lord, he got them packing wood to go bins. Thank you for dining at Hawthorne. Letting the worthy opponent go. Everything. Hmm, that actually made me kind of sad. I'm sorry, guys. Done or been better. I do kind of feel sorry for his wife, though. Jeez. Give me that. Before our final course, there is the matter of the bill. Literally laying it all on the table, where this all started to begin with. I told you. Jesus. You represent the ruin of my art. The regulars, the picky customers, the foodies, the destruction of what makes a service job a service job. Nachos? S'mores. Jeez. It's the destruction of what makes a service job a service job. Including your own self-doubt. That comes from whatever source it may be for him it was his mother and all the women go down with the people that they're stuck with some people get away some don't unethically sourced chocolate and gelatinized sugar water imprisoned by industrial grade graham cracker and it's fucking delicious go fuck yourself purifying flame we are about to blow this whole place up the heat proof hands 
he had mercy on his mother with all of that alcohol. She's gonna go up like a fucking torch. You don't know how to drive a boat. Stop. <laughs> Sorry, that was rude. I love you all. We love you too. Yeah. And there goes the whole place. Oh dear. Oh no. Oh, she stopped it on purpose. Yep, there we go. Customers, staff, restaurant. And it all began with a cheeseburger. And in the end, that's all it is. Okay. All right. All right. I see why people wanted me, wanted me to react to this now. It's real fucked up, but I get it. Ooh. Okay. So this analytic section is probably going to be a long one because there is a lot to say. I know I mentioned this at the beginning is that I immediately recognized it as a spot near or around Jekyll Island because I used to work there on the river, on the beach. That was my wheelhouse. And to see that kind of stress that I felt, one of the reasons I left the job, one of the things that took a physical toll on my body, I watched through the eyes of Ralph Fiennes. I don't know what that says about me specifically, but you know. But let's start with Ralph Fiennes. Ralph Fiennes, deep down, is like every male chef that has never been told no. He is what Anthony Bourdain strove not to become. When you get so involved in your art, eventually that is all you become. And this is anything, okay? Your job, your family, your religion, your politics. This goes for anything. He said that this trip was egoless. It's really not. As a matter of fact, it was all about him. Like he killed John Leguizamo simply because he didn't like him. None of it is ever egoless. Despite all the airs that they have, all the speeches they make, it is all about ego. It is all about their food. It is all about what they want. However, it does come from a place that is never quite satisfied with their work. And that can come from anywhere. There are some people who are just so horrified by the concept of complaint complacency. When they're confronted with it, it disgusts them. You see this all the time with people who regret becoming parents or regret having a certain kind of job or hell, even regret moving somewhere that they didn't really like. Where he honestly became the thing he hated the most and fell apart and took it out on everyone else around him. Now, I do want to talk about the victims. And we'll get to Aaron slash Margot separately. The victims are all categorized in the same customers every food service worker hates. First off, there's Tyler, the foodie who is just so involved in what you're doing. They are often very pretentious and tend to tell you how to do your job. And then when they think that you don't know how to do your job, mostly insults, they don't tip you, they don't, they barely treat you like you're human. These people are really often no more than annoying. Tyler amps it up a notch by being so involved in what he thinks he knows so much about that he put Margot on the chopping block. Margot, who didn't do anything, completely innocent. He was so willing to put her on the chopping block that he showed that he was no more than all of the other customers, taking advantage of the people that work for them, treating them like commodities rather than people. He never even said thank you. He was just, oh, I know so much about this. I know what a pack of jets is. I can't stand people that have no practical knowledge. I can critique this and critique that. And this is why I say that people who are overcritical cannot create. And that's what I say about the food critic and her sycophant. They're like Tyler, the foodie, but they're the advanced version. Their criticisms can make or break people and they have broken a lot of people and the people that they make oftentimes don't or can't appreciate it because when you reach a certain amount of popularity, all you're doing is working and working to strive to please other people. People that you will never meet, people that you will never know, people whose reviews can break you even though you've never seen their face. I want to talk about the emulsion because it at first it was a small detail and then it was kind of a moderate size detail and then it was big. I was fully expecting Elsa to grab her by the back of the head and bury her face in it. But no, 
To me, it shows how the food critic writes because a broken sauce that was that big, if that, very, very small, was probably going to be a whole paragraph. That's what critics do, right? They find a small crack and they make it seem like the biggest deal. Everything in that meal was perfect. Her job loses its entire mystique when everything is perfect about a restaurant. So any mistakes she has to latch onto and the people who read her critiques are going to latch onto it. And that can break someone no matter how small of a mistake it is. Speaking of mistakes, the regulars made the mistake of wanting to go to a restaurant for its prestige rather than its food. They cannot remember a single dish from this restaurant. Oh, they probably talk him up when they come. Oh, they're probably like, this is so great. Oh, chef, this is so good. But once they leave, they don't remember. But also that makes me wonder, are the regulars just a manifestation of the chef's fear that his food actually isn't all that remarkable? It also goes to show that they're just another group of people who see the cooks and the chef not as people, but as tools that exist for them. They don't make anything remarkable despite how hard they work. That is why I want to talk about the finance bros as well. I think they're kind of there just to be the asshole victims, essentially be the shitty customers, asking for stuff that's not on the menu. And then when they can't get it, they start making a fuss. Like, don't you know who I am? Don't ever ask that because no one gives a shit. No one gives a shit who you are. If it's not on the menu, it's not there. You don't get special treatment. Well, some people do get special treatment, but they shouldn't, not for existing. And they have to learn that lesson the hard way. And I believe Vetterman had to learn that lesson the hard way. I bet what happened was that even though he kept the restaurant open, several of the suppliers probably also closed down. There's no substitutions, of course. It's not about the substitutions. The fact that he wanted to sub out different suppliers and different purveyors, and probably for money reasons, because, you know, COVID was rough on everyone, especially the service industry. He supplanted the people that the chef relied on, which probably left him to work harder to do more to satisfy his customers that are never satisfied. Therefore, he slips deeper into madness. This brings me to John Leguizamo's character, whose name I can never freaking remember. Every time I see him, I'm just like, ah, that's John Leguizamo. I never remember the character name. John Leguizamo's character, he's just a jackass. He's one of those customers that comes in, makes a fuss, attracts all the attention, but really isn't that great anyway. Talks about the chef like they're friends. He doesn't know him, doesn't care to know him. Oftentimes, treats the people around him like shit. And then when he gets called out for it, oh, I know, I'm awful, I'm terrible, I'm so hurt. But that just tells me John Leguizamo and Ralph Fiennes are the same. He is doing all of these terrible things and he is rationalizing it. I am in pain, so you have to suffer with me. And that's basically what he told his assistant. I'm awful, so you're going to have to suffer. That's probably how the mother ran her household. Now she didn't speak a word, but she was fantastic. She didn't have to though, because she is the ghost behind this entire charade. From what Ralph Fiennes said, she was never satisfied. And she said, oh, pretty handsome boy. That's probably what she called him. She probably looked at Tyler in his chef's jacket, thought that that was her son, and said the exact thing she said to him when he got his first chef whites. If she was never satisfied, he never felt good enough. So what happens when he gets into a job where he never feels good enough? That void inside is just gonna get wider and wider. He has a wife and child out there somewhere. They left him because he wasn't attentive enough, was not loving enough, was not there enough, any sort of reasons. And then lastly, but not leastly, of course not leastly, because she's the final girl. We have Margot slash Erin. One of the reasons I thought her name was going to be Erica, I always say a multifaceted name, in a sense, salaciousness or just being flat out unremarkable in a lot of literary works, because usually women named Erica are often treated as background characters. Now, Erin means peace, which is what the chef 
wanted all along. And I believe that that is what he got at the end, despite the fact that I kind of hate him a little bit. I'm not saying that he deserved peace or he deserved any kind of healing, because to be honest, he is probably just as bad as the customers he hates so much. Probably worse. People who treat people badly often draw people to because the people who are drawn to them think that they will be special. They think that they will be the one to change him. They think that they will be the one he will notice. He was a narcissist to the very end. The only thing that really mattered to him in the end was peace. He didn't want to try anymore. This is gonna sound so pretentious, oh my god. But he has become immune to the joy of creation. He has become immune to the fire. For someone who has reached the height of their craft, what else is there? Peace. And the only peace he found was death. Personally, I think he just could have used a fucking therapist. It's not like he couldn't afford it. Honestly, when it comes to whether or not I like this movie, I, I do like it. Don't get me wrong. This is a great movie. I don't think it's as deep as it wants to be because at the end of the day, this is a cathartic anthem for people who have worked in service. In service jobs, even if you get to the very top, the only thing you're going to find at the very top is more demand. And I think that's why a lot of people are getting wasted on retail and food service jobs these days because the more demanding people get, the more unfulfilled you're gonna get because what do you get to ask for? What do you want? I believe Erin felt the same way because she is clearly a very in-demand and high-priced escort. And the higher the price goes, the more depraved the requests are. Yeah, maybe she enjoyed it at first. It made her feel empowered, made her feel sexy, you know? People on OnlyFans do what they do for a variety of reasons. And you know, some people find power in it. But eventually, you are going to be asked to do something that's going to cross the line. I bet you she stopped enjoying it when she realized she was role-playing that man's daughter who was hinted at either having died or committed suicide, which led to her mother wanting to do the same. It is the anthem of people who keep having to give and give and give and give. And then once they're used up, realizing that there's nothing to ask for anymore. They've gotten to where they need to be. They have gotten to be the best and there is nothing left. Some people dig complacency. It's not a bad thing inherently, but some people are are just never satisfied. And when you get to the top, you either leave your career altogether, like homeboy could have written a book. Maybe he should have done the travel food show. I don't know. I see this in a lot of chefs, particularly a chef I used to work with who I'm not going to name, but if they see this video, they'll know who I'm talking about. He used to work at a place called Crystal Beer Parlor and he washed dishes. And then much like how I became a pastry chef, kind of accidentally became a line cook because someone didn't show up. He took to it. It, and he worked all over Savannah and eventually came to be the head chef at the hotel that I worked at. And this guy had reached a point where he did not want to try anymore. I think as long as I worked there, the executive chef only showed up two times out of the week if we were lucky. He only showed up maybe to do the books about once a week. So I maybe saw him like three, four times a month. The only time I saw him was during the charity events that took place like in, I guess, the town's high society. That was really the only reason he showed up to cook and he only did three dishes. Prime rib, lobster mac and cheese, and shrimp and grits. At this point, this man had reached the top, the culinary world in this town at one of the most famous hotels in the city, rubbing elbows with the most important people in the city. There was no experimentation he only did three meals and no one asked that of him. That's not what anybody wanted of him, but that was all he had the strength to do. He made life miserable every time he showed up in that kitchen. Everyone was a burden to him. Reading people left and right, berating my interns, berating me, berating the wait staff because he was so eternally bored. Often the only reason he went after people was because they annoyed him. He saw me cutting something with a paring knife and called me an idiot. Looked me in the eye and said, I wish I could stab you with that. Give me that, that you're so annoying. And I was like, Okay. All he wanted me to do was use the utility knife. He could have just said that. This movie does insist upon itself a little bit, but it is great. It is very cathartic, especially that scene where he's like, can I get a little bread? She goes, 
No, because every waitress or waiter has wanted to do that. Because there is always someone who asks for some shit that's not on the menu or asks for a substitution that just cannot happen. And then when you tell them no, it's like some synapses don't fire in their brain. They short circuit. What do you mean no? What do you mean I can't have what I want? I paid for this. I should be able to get what I want. You paid $33, ma'am. I don't get paid enough for you to get on my nerves like this. As someone who has worked in food service, has worked in retail, and has worked in hospitality for over half Half my life, I have been working in service jobs since the age of 15. I am 32 now. You don't realize how much power is in saying no until you can't. That's what struck him in the end, where Margot was finally like, you know what? I'm done. I didn't like your food. I don't like you. Let me go. When he said, if only you could have fought back harder, got the pushback that drove him to succeed in the first place. That was all he needed to finally get to his final course. I guess you could say on some deeper level that the s'mores represented the decline, the decay of the food industry that is that we're currently seeing now. As someone who has worked in the food industry for a really long time, because keep in mind, I wasn't just a chef. I worked with people who sold to chefs and I sold to chefs. I spoke to chefs and all that good stuff. The food industry was not built on anything sturdy. It was built on the backs of the people who were willing to work. To say that it's going through a decay is unfair to those people. It is going through a collapse because those people are exhausted. They have reached the end of their rope because the demands are only getting worse. What's ruining the industry is the entitlement. Not just the entitlement of the customers, we already know that, but the entitlement of the chefs themselves. And I've said this in several TikToks videos. There is a disdain for customers that aren't two white people on a date with no kids, no dietary restrictions, and will drink alcohol. Anything else is pretty much despised. I could go on about, you know, how COVID struggles. I personally just think COVID was the tipping point. Regardless, I still say that this movie was fantastic. If you've ever worked retail or food service, you should watch it. If you've ever had a shitty teacher, this is a horror movie for people who don't like horror movies. This, this movie is for me. There are like a couple of gripes I have here and there. Like for instance, Aaron's Epiphany should have been, I think a bit longer, but the movie was already a little too long at that point. It looked like something was left on the cutting room floor, which is fine. I personally think that Ralph Fiennes and the sommeliers actor should have switched roles. I would have found a jovial, happy chef a lot more unnerving than the sort of serious, distant, pretentious guy. But yeah, he was pretty intimidating. The most menacing part of this movie was Elsa. Absolutely, hands down, loved her, best part of the movie. But yeah, great movie, probably will <laughs> watch it again with the husband. Seven or eight out of 10. Regardless, with that being said, please like if you like this video. Please subscribe if you really like this video and would like to see more. Please tell me you'd like to see more because I really love this movie. Um, If you have any more suggestions of any movies you would like me to see, please leave a comment below. If you would like to support the channel, you can find me on Patreon where I update full, uncut, uncensored reactions the day before I post them on YouTube. So since I post on Tuesdays and Thursdays now, you'll see one on Monday and you'll see it on Wednesday. Also, you can find me on just about any piece of social media. If you would like to see pictures of all the food I've made, you can find me on Instagram, Tumblr, TikTok, or Twitter, but mostly Tumblr and TikTok because fuck Twitter. And with that being said, thank you for watching. Stay weird, lovelies, and happy eating.